Secure Ninja TV is in Dubai on the Palm Jumeirah. This massive man-made island has countless electromechanical and skater systems that keep nature and the Persian Gulf from reclaiming everything built here. These OT systems are a very attractive attack surface that needs to be protected. Let's learn more about how to do that. Secure Ninja Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja again and we're still in Dubai at the JISEC uh, conference. I'm here with Alan from SEGA OT Systems. Hello Alan, how are you today? Hi Andrew, I'm good, thank you. Excellent. Um, this is some very interesting machinery you have to show us here. Um, when we're teaching things like Security Plus or Certified Ethical Hacker, we talk a lot about uh, SCADA systems, ICS systems, how important they are to protect them. Now, a lot of the protections we have are monitoring the human machine interface and making sure we're putting good programs onto the PLC systems. But it looks like your systems go to layer zero. They go a little bit deeper. Can you tell us a little bit about them, please? Correct. So, SIGA, solution, SIGA OT solution is a solution that monitors OT uh, operations directly from the source. We go down to the sensor layer, the field level, where we take information directly from the, how the system operates uh, out of band from the network itself, which could be compromised. And we correlate that information also with network data and also with anomaly detection tools in order to understand if the system is compromised and misbehaving because of an attack. Excellent. So we've all heard the stories about Stuxnet. There was um, enrichment of uranium somewhere, and the centrifuges were spinning at incorrect frequencies, but the PLC system, the SCADA systems, were reporting that everything looks A-OK. -okay. Would your system be, be able to detect something like that? 100%. That's one of the reasons that SIGA built this type of technology, because we wanted to give, give the HMI operators and the network operators to understand that they can authenticate the data that they're seeing. They can trust and have visibility and, and understand that if they're seeing something that they, in the HMI, they know that's really what's happening and there's no some actor that's reporting falsely into their HMI. Excellent. Well, uh, you've got a full setup here to show us. Could you explain briefly what's going on and explain how the physical is represented in the HMI interface as well, please? Sure. So this side of the, of the uh, demo is the level zero demo where we see all the operation. It's actually an uh, electromechanical process that has a compressor sending compressed air to the, pist to the uh, uh, pressurized tank. And the pressurized tank is sending compressed air to the piston that's going up and down. Now, all this is regulated by a control system, specifically a PLC, which has the logic. This is a Siemens S7 PLC, which has all the logic and sends commands to the level zero uh, systems what to do next, how fast the piston should go, what's the pressure thresholds, etc. The reporting from the PLC is to the HMI. So the HMI data is coming from the PLC, to and this is where the operators can understand what exactly is happening to their uh, machines. Excellent. So I see you have the physical, there are sensors here, and your system intercepts the sensor data, takes a copy of it, one copy goes to the Siemens, and here we see it's the Siemens S7 um, SCADA language that we're familiar with. Other SCADA languages would be DMP3, um, languages like that. Um, and then your system, I believe, has a type of machine learning that sees the normal behavior of the, the industrial system, is that correct? Exactly, so we take the information, we intercept with the uh, signal coming from the sensors to the PLC while there's still analog electrical signals before they're digitized, and that helps us to be out of band. We take those signals uh, very safely and unidirectionally into our platform where we can analyze the performance of uh, the sensors, of the machines and the process to make sure that they're running according to their normal behavior and not misbehaving due to any type of attack or anomaly that's related to a cyber attack. Excellent. Now, I don't suppose you'd be able to show us a demonstration of a simulated attack, would you? Well, you didn't come here for nothing. We'll show you how an attack operates, and we actually simulated a real attack inside this uh, demonstration system. What we're going to do is send, uh, uh, simulate an attacker that's been able to compromise the PLC. So what he's going to do is send false information to the HMI layer to think that everything is normal, like the, like the Stuxnet situation, and at the same time change the commands of the field level to, to do different stuff than the normal stuff. So we're going to operate the attack right now. 
So you can see how the piston, for example, is running much faster than normal. The pressure thresholds have also changed, which means that they're not acting according to their normal procedures. At the same time, the HMI is not reflecting that uh, attack and shows regular, uh, standard, normal behavior of the process. So essentially, the operators are blind to what's really happening and they're not seeing correct information. And that's a very dangerous situation because at the end of the day, now the attacker can do whatever he wants. He can change, he can blow up things, he can endanger human lives and the environment as well or shut down the entire system. Excellent, so the PLC is doing one thing and reporting to the operator something different. But your system, I believe, has detected that something is going wrong. Can you show us? Precisely. So the SIGA system is not compromised by network attackers because we are out of band, because we're taking information directly from the source. We analyze that information, and in that way we can send alerts when something is misbehaving on the process level, even when the PLC is compromised and the HMI is not reflecting the correct information. So you can see here an alert has been triggered by the SIGA system to say there's an anomaly with the piston behavior, there's an anomaly with the pressure thresholds, something is not going correct. And you can see the different patterns of normal operation versus anomaly operations. That's exactly what we're here to do. My, my goodness, this is very, very interesting, Alan. Um, anything like air traffic control systems, water, pur pur uh, water purification systems, electricity generation, all those kind of things, they would benefit from a system like this. It's very, very interesting. Alan, thank you very much for showing thank us this. Thank you very much. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and to like. We have a lot more fascinating content coming from Dubai. I'm Andrew Howard, Secure Ninja TV. We'll talk to you again soon.